Hi, it's Chef Janie Pendleton. We're back in the kitchen where we're on day five of canning. Yes, here quickly, I'll show you what I got going here. I just picked the figs off of our fig tree. This is just a sample of them. We have probably at least three dozen coming on here at once. This is just the first picking and oh my goodness, I can't wait to dive into one of these uh, figs. Remember the story of the fig tree in the Bible. All right, well, there you go. We have our fig tree, and when it produces, it produces. And remember, when you plant your fig trees, they really like to have their roots really tight and uh, hugged. I call them hugged roots. That's why they uh, fig trees do really well around rocks and around uh, foundations of homes. Um, because they, and you don't really want to put them there because they're inv invasive to your foundation and can crack your foundation. So what I do is I plant my fig trees in a big urn and you can put that urn in the ground winter them over or you can put the urn and make it so you can carry it in and out of your greenhouse like i do and i'm getting some beautiful beautiful figs off the tree now so midsummer and they start putting figs on in early summer but be careful because the animals will come up and enjoy them too so you want to keep them up off the ground a bit but like i said the roots just love being inside the urns and they're doing great um here i have uh, pickles that are soaked in boiling water overnight. Uh, they're ready to go to make sweet pickles and I have another batch here to make some more dill pickles. Um, I'm going to go count see what I need in my pantry before I decide how many sweets and how many dills I need to replace. And then over here I've already got some batches of the dill pickles made with my fresh dill and dill seed that I grew right in there. Um, the green beans, of course, there's a sea of green beans. This is the first picking, was 21 quarts. This is the second picking, and I did a lot of these in the one and a half pints. These right here will all go to my son. These right here will be for us, and then there's probably another picking or two on that, and I'll probably get maybe three or four quarts out of the next pickings. Um, but you don't want to stop. Uh, besides what he eats and what we eat, you know, during the summer, this is what you know, can your leftovers learn this uh, trade, learn this hobby? It's very important. And then here we have some beautiful uh, corn salsa. It looks awesome. It's medium heat. Um, I used my son's um, jalapeno pepper. So, um, and then I even made some small jars for my mother because she's, um, well, she likes that kind of thing. So I made a couple of small jars for family that have the smaller smaller families and then you know the bigger jars for those that just love it so much that they could sit there and eat a whole jar right <laughs> so i gotta finish labeling these and uh here i want to make a note that i knew use the new ball uh, twist jars and i want to remind everybody that they do not have canning times on these twist jars they're only tw uh, 28 ounces so they're uh under the 32 ounces for a quart these are only 28 ounces, but you still want to treat them like quarts and go the amount of time that you do for quarts. It's the same thing that I do on the pint and a half, okay? I treat them the same. So why there, why balls coming out with jars that are per ounces instead of, you know, basically, you know, quarts and pints and half pints, which is what all their blue book cane books and everything's based on, I don't know. But whether they're trying to take us into the ounces and they're going to change things, like they change their lids, I don't know. I don't know, but they even had the twisty pint jars as well, and then they had little bitty jars that you could not can with. They said not for canning. So why would they would come out with jars and then put them in the canning section, but you can't can with them? Again, I don't know. But I will tell you, the only jars of all the original uh, ball jars, here's your little half pints or what we call jelly jars. Here's some regular mouth ball jars in the pints. Here's the one and a half which is our favorite size of ball jar. Everything sealed. And remember, I had four of these twist jars. So everything sealed really well in those. And by the way, there's my all my chow chow relish. Didn't that turn out beautiful? Great thing to do with the leftover cabbages, peppers, and, uh, and uh, onions and things from your garden. Squash, zucchini, all of that went right in here and peppers. It's just a beautiful it's just a beautiful uh, mix there and that recipe I've already made 
all of these things except for this particular salsa it's a new recipe that i tried with lime juice and corn and um and it's absolutely delicious a little hot for me but it is delicious but i want to show you in here and i got some leftovers here see all my leftovers like i'm trying to keep in here and i'm gonna make some more something i don't know what but i'm gonna make something and um and i still have some peppers here coming on um i still have my garlic all shelled it's ready to go and then i had one one thing of pickles where the lid buckled and although it sealed the failure rate is high on a buckled lid and so you don't want to risk it so after it cooled i put that jar in my refrigerator and i'm gonna and of course i stored my dill right here in the refrigerator for the next batch of pickles so that's fine just pre-cut it keep the lid off of it and slide it in here and it's ready for at least a week you can hold that for a week or so until you get ready to make your next batch of dill pickles but on the buckled lids tip number one if you get a buckled lid don't store it away the reason why you got the buckles is because you put like i did you put the ring on a little bit too tight and see this is one of the new let me see if i can show you here oops see if i can show you here this is one of the new ball jar lids you can tell because it's got the little date dashes here down here and down there's where it buckled and it's one of the new ball lids and um, i'm getting buckling on the ball lids so i re back and reread the directions on the old box and the new box and it said to um to not screw these on as tight and so i probably screwed it on a little bit too tight so the new ones you don't have to uh, even hardly go finger tight on them but i was afraid to get failure you know you, it's hard to teach a new old dog new tricks right i can be taught but um but yeah the new lids um especially on the pint jars and the regular mouths you don't want to put them on too tight when you're wa when you're water bath canning uh you've got to get that pressure and that air to release and it will buckle your lid and it could be too that i didn't debubble that one i could have swore i debubbled all of them but you know there's always that risk that chance that you don't but that water bath canning uh, should have taken care of that but other than that jar and i didn't have enough salsa and i didn't have any pint jars left so and we wanted to eat some obviously we ate some and so we got to enjoy a little bit of our harvest there so i put one of these in the refrigerator for us to enjoy but then when i got done um one of the twist jars here uh, it didn't seal and when um i had it on the thing it blew some stuff out the side so that just meant that i either overfilled it or something got up underneath there and while it was hot it blew it out but once it blew the stuff out then it sealed but i put an x on it because i knew i was having problems with that jar and even though it sealed it has a low percentage it has a high percentage of failure rate so um so i knew if i got something up underneath that seal that probably would come off especially since we're talking tomatoes i'm not going to risk it um i did pressure can my salsa i do not water bath can tomatoes unless you have a ph um, a digital monitor uh, which i do not have i probably should get one but i just even though this has the vinegar and the citric acid and the lime juice in it uh lemon juice whatever you choose to put in it i decided to go ahead and still pressure can and i did and i pressure canned for 20 minutes and i'm glad that i did i'm glad that i did it gave me a peace of mind i just don't like water bath canning oh yeah and down here is all of my um is all of my relish pickle relish that i'm getting well pickles that i've that i've got all shredded and ready okay so my refrigerator's full of goodies and i'm just going to keep right on going all right so right now that's where we're at this is day five and it looks like we're getting a storm this morning so it's a good day to be in the house and canning and then i still have these peppers here to go so if you have any suggestions or tips i still have some beautiful chocolate peppers here and i have some beautiful um bell peppers to um to can up and i want to get these done i want to get these done so i'm either going to can them or i'm going to dehydrate them and i'm leaning towards dehydrating because i there's nothing better than a concentrated taste of a dehydrated pepper in your soups and stews and pizzas and things just have them pre-chopped dehydrate them 
vacuum seal them, and then just keep revacuum sealing the jar every time you take out a tablespoon. A tablespoon of dehydrated peppers are equivalent to a one full pepper. And then you just throw it on everything, they're so delicious. And then the oven kind of rehydrates in the, the steam off a of pizza or like um, some sort of pasta or something. It all rehydrates those peppers and they are delicious. So just another tip to dehydrate, um, to dehydrate some of your produce as well. So we're gonna get started here and I got this new little gadget that I found at Menards. I found this at Menards and some of you probably are already using it I don't know but it's called the lid rack. This is called the lid rack and it says it easily sterilizes the lids okay and it just uh, it folds up and it has this little rubber ring that's just uh, fold it up and put it back and put it back in storage no big deal doesn't take up too much room but it is um, it's perforated and it's porous and it allows for the full water circulation and sterilization of these lids. So, um, but it has 15 individual regular or wide mouth canning lid spaces right here, okay? And you can see where I did small mouth and I just slipped them in this little flower looking, set, almost a sunflower looking thing, and then right here. And then I'll pull it back out. The only problem I had was finding the pan that would fit it finding the pan that would fit it. And then here's what it looks like right there. See, it's just, it's porous to let the water through. And it just folds right up. So you just put it in here like this. Put in whatever number of lids you, you uh, need here. I find that sticking a few lids down the sides like this even gave me even more room. In here just like that right there and trust me I'm gonna need it so so right now um, I'm going to get my lids already I'm not gonna put any hot water or boiling water over these lids until I'm 10 to 15 minutes away from actually filling the jars all right but this was just a little uh, something I wanted to show you and again just make sure that you have a pan you could probably find one at Goodwill so anyway that's just today's tip um, I find, of course, if you just put them in your pan, every other one like this, you know, like that, that makes it for a good way to work too. But this just kind of helps ensure that extra sterilization that you're trying to achieve. And, and really, to be honest with you, if you're just going to sit the new lids in just hot water that's barely, hot, you know, just hot, hot, you're not really getting uh, uh, sterilized anyway, you're getting sanitized. That's what the canning process is for anyway. It and uh, remember, always pressure can low acid foods like meats and vegetables. And uh, you can water bath can uh, most fruits, okay? Relishes, jams, jellies, things that are high in uh, pectin and um, citric acid, uh, lemon juice, uh, lime juice, things like that, you can uh, water bath can. Tomatoes, like I said, are a real iffy line for me. Even salsa, I pressure can. I just don't know that pH balance, especially if you're going to create your own recipes or you're messing with a recipe, and I'm always going off the beaten path. So, um, I've been canning for a long time, and um, this is year, my husband figured it up, this is year 36 that I've been canning. And when I can, I mean, this is just day, this is just day number five. And by the way, day number three, I didn't can anything. I went out to the garden and pulled weeds with my husband and picked all the produce that was coming on so that's just the first picking and like I said I still have lots and lots to go here but some stuff's just going to have to wait until picking number two comes so we're gonna keep going we're gonna keep going and we have a lot of great recipes that we're going to be trying this year um, we have oh my goodness we have so many recipes we're gonna be doing this year um, from apple pie filling uh, to um, I'd like to figure out what kind of recipes to put the figs in I think I'll probably make some bear claws uh, with the figs some bear claw, bear claw danishes uh, let me know what your favorite fig recipe is down below give me give me the recipe and maybe I'll try something that you've got this is my first year for really having figs 
Uh, last year, my husband ate the three figs that came on, and the raccoons, I think, ate the rest. Um, so here, we're just going to rinse. We've got our pickles separated according to size. Little guy can go in here. There we go. Okay. You can see those are the larger and these are the smaller. These were the four to five inches or the number four, number fives, and these were the number six to sevens and eights on up. And you can see they got they got pretty good size here. And all I did was pour some boiling water from that boiling water kettle there. I boiled water and poured them over the top after I sliced them. And then I took the really big ones and then I put them through my Ninja. And I've got a video on that coming up. If I haven't already posted it, it's coming up. And it's a video in the Ninja of how I quickly made a quick uh, make of all the really big cucumbers that got too big in my son's garden. The ones he neglected to pick. <laughs> No, I could have helped him. No, um, it's all of our fault. They got too big, but we decided to take those and make those all into relish. So it worked out for me because I'm really low on relish and I was really low on chow chow, which is my favorite hot dog uh, relish. And he just had some cabbages he said he wasn't going to use. So I got to make that. So, so now he's going to get rel relish. He didn't think he was going to use his cabbages. But now he's got hot dog hamburger relish. So he's happy. My son is happy. The grandkids are happy. They love pickles. And we all love fried dill pickles. So we're going to make an extra batch of the dill pickles. And then also these here, we're going to make some uh, Indian sweets out of some of these as well. So I'm going to quit talking and I'm going to get started. Um, it's going to be a long day ahead of me. I've been canning till almost 3, 4, 5 o'clock in the morning uh, when I've been pressure canning. Water bath canning, that's so much easier than the pressure canning. But I love to can and I enjoy it. It's a great hobby for me. It's feeding my family. It's giving them fresh organic produce that has had nothing. You should see his garden. He doesn't powder it with seven, nothing. Uh, we love you. We hope you're having a blessed day. All the recipes that you have seen here today, all of these canning recipes have already been filmed and they're already on my channel. So be sure and subscribe and in that search bar and that little uh, magnifying glass, just search uh, canning, put the word canning in there and the product that you want to can. And I'm sure I have a video that will pop up on the subject, okay? Lots of other videos coming up for canning. And we're going to be doing some really fun projects this year, plus this salsa, because this is different than my other salsas. And then I think when the tomatoes really come on super big, I think I'm going to be making some more of our chili sauce. And that recipe is on my channel as well. And that is absolutely delicious on beans and cornbread. I wouldn't eat my beans and cornbread without it. So I've got to make some more. I'm only got like one jar left. But anyway, we love you. Go with God. Enjoy your day. Lots coming up. We love you. Blessings.